Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Anthony Cave, a board certified and Stanford and Harvard trained anesthesiologist and integrative medicine specialist, meaning that I like to use natural therapies whenever I safely can. And I use regular Western medications whenever safely possible. But whenever it's right for the patient, I always lean towards natural therapies because there's typically fewer side effects fewer costs, and they're more protective and preventive for many conditions. But CMOS is kind of an interesting one. It's absolutely gathered or uh, captivated my patients in the San Francisco Bay Area and all across social media. I have gotten nothing but questions about CMOS, also called Irish moss, aka red algae, and weight loss. And this is a little bit concerning to me because Unlike a lot of the other natural supplements that I do recommend in the right patient, CMOS is a little bit different. So by popular request, I was going to talk about what the evidence is for CMOS, you know, what it is, what it might or might not do. Is it actually, does it have real benefits or is it just a money grab and a scam? And it's a real concern that I have, my, uh, that I have for my patients because the whole wallet biopsy thing, I am very sensitive to for weight loss. You know, it's no question that weight loss drugs are incredibly, incredibly uh, popular. And if a pill can do that, especially a natural one that's cheap, that doesn't require a doctor's prescription, it's certainly very appealing. And that's where the wallet biopsy thing comes in. A wallet biopsy is literally a procedure or a medication or a supplement that takes a biopsy of a patient's wallet, meaning that they're just taking money, money grab, scam, you can pick the word for it. But is CMOS, I mean, like I said, it's got all the attractive things, natural, it's got lots of nutrients and all that. Does it work? Well, CMOS, like any allergy, is rich in nutrients, no question, because all plants bioaccumulate whatever is in the dirt. So vitamins and minerals can, or not vitamins so much, but minerals can accumulate in plants. Sea-based or aquatic plants are very good at concentrating things. So yes, algae is very high compared to its weight in land plants, in zinc, magnesium, iodine, but also arsenic, lead, mercury, copper. So it's not just a concentrator of all the positive minerals, it's about all sorts of minerals that it can concentrate. And that's where some of the risks come in, which right off the bat, like, you know, in medicine, we always say that you got to do no harm first. So whenever there's a supplement, the first question is, is it harmful? Well, yeah, CMOS can potentially be very high in concentration of these minerals, some of which uh, might be toxic. I'm looking at you, lead and mercury and arsenic, but even something like iodine. So a lot of people tell me that, oh, well, you know, even if it doesn't help with the weight loss, which we'll get to in a minute, there's only one study about that. They say that you need iodine for your thyroid health, which is absolutely true. It's also true that many Western diets are at risk of being deficient in iodine. If anyone knows why, let me know in the comments and I'll give you a shout out because I was surprised. I didn't, was not aware of this myself, but why hypoiodine based hypothyroidism is actually a thing even in modern society despite all of the iodized salts so please let me know and i'll I, i'm actually very curious if you guys know because it's something that, that we need to be aware of um hey harmony harding thank you so much for the kind comments and as of it for everyone else as well thank you so much so you guys let me know about why iodine is at risk of being deficient. And I'll tell you that, yeah, sea moss can be very high. Bladder rack, all sorts of allergies are going to be high in iodine. But you still come with the risk of concentrating other toxic um, minerals. So the iodine, you can get iodine from other sources. Dairy, meat, you can just get regular seaweed that's not concentrated sea moss. Um... Robin, good to see you as well. I still haven't seen anyone tell me why the Western diet can be deficient in iodine. I'm very curious if you guys know why. So let's get to the big one, weight loss. So maybe the iodine thing is plus or minus. What about the weight loss? There is one study. It's a randomized control trial in Korea. Got about 78 patients. Yeah, 78 if I remember. Uh, no, pardon, 79 patients, 2019. They randomized people to CMOS or not. 
and looked for 12 weeks to see if they lost weight. And they did a good job. They looked specifically at the species of algae called Galadium elegans, GE. After 12 weeks, guys, the CMOS group lost a whopping like 1.2 kilos or something like two, three, four pounds over 12 weeks, which, hey, that's that's certainly better than nothing. In fact, the control group, which is good, added control, right? The control group gained a pound or two. So that's great. We got one trial that shows that one species of sea moss given to Koreans uh, over 12 weeks had a very, very modest change in weight loss. So, hey, well, that's better than nothing. And I'll give you that. But the other thing that I'll be transparent with you all is the sheer number of companies that have reached out to me asking me to advertise their CMOS has been through the roof. And I, you know, I don't do product placement or ads. I do this information for you, give it out there. I do appreciate it when you guys subscribe and share what you've learned with others to help empower yourselves to <laughs> uncover your inner healing potential, whether it be with natural supplements or with psychedelics or a myketamine infusion clinic, doesn't matter. As long as you guys are empowering yourself, that's what matters for me. Um, so yeah, I don't do product placement and I don't obviously do CMOS product placement either. And I was very alarmed as I looked through the papers out there that the majority are websites that are just pushing CMOS because it's rich in zinc, it's rich in magnesium, it's rich in this and that. And those have been shown to increase metabolism or increase cardiovascular health. And I had to respectfully put an end to that because when I'm making a recommendation to a patient, I have a patient, whether it's before surgery or for their wellness in my academy infusion center, I am responsible for this patient. And if I'm going to make a recommendation for something that might have harms, like we said, this can concentrate heavy metals and other toxins. If I'm looking the patient in the eye and I'm like, yeah, CMOS works very well in worms and rats and Petri dishes. And I think you'd be a good guinea pig for it. I, in good consciousness, my friends, I can't do that with my patients. I'm responsible. If something bad happens, it's on my name. It's under me. I have to look them in the eyes when they've wasted money on a supplement that hasn't helped. Maybe it's caused harm. Maybe it's taken away hope. Remember that whenever we prescribe a medication, natural or synthetic, it doesn't matter. We cause a series of chain reactions in a, per, in a patient's brain that can disempower them. So the classic was for that study I mentioned in the past with antihypertensives or blood pressure medications. If we prescribe blood pressure, med if we prescribe blood pressure medications to patients that are on the border of needing blood pressure medications, then there's a subset that go on to not take the lifestyle modification factors seriously and they gain weight more than those that did not take the anti blood pressure medication because there is some level of either letting go some level of thinking that this medication will solve my problems it can disempower us the same thing goes for is we talked about before for genetic tests when we tell somebody they have a genetic condition even if they don't we're doing a study and yeah it's a lie but their brains begin to act as if they actually have that genetic mutation so if it's like a gene for exercise conditioning or fitness level or for ghrelin levels or whatever their bodies actually play out what we tell them even if it's actually not what their genetic material codes in their body. These are all examples of how much our words matter, how much our actions and what we recommend and prescribe to patients matters. So if I'm going to make a recommendation, I want there to be solid evidence that it is safe first and foremost, and that it works in more than just rats and worms. So I'm very happy that there's that one study that shows that it can help with weight loss. That's fantastic for specifically gladium elegans, specifically when used for 12 weeks. And that's some, that's some solid evidence. And I'm okay with that as one study. But I would only make that recommendation if it's in the complete holistic view of also recommending physical activity, sleep, social interactions, the rest of your diet. Taking in a silo, this is like, um, gosh, there's this analogy that's a little bit inappropriate about um, going in the ocean, you know, I don't want to say the other word for it, but I think you know what I mean. It's if I'm trying to make a dent in somebody's body weight naturally, just CMOS alone 
I am not going to put a patient's hope and aspiration in one little bit of algae to do that when their whole body can be also used to make this huge change that'll benefit them for the rest of their life. So if that means smoking cessation, addressing any drug addictions, addressing fear of going to the gym, agoraphobia, whatever it is, that is the love and compassion that patients deserve, not just being recommended a pill, whether it be natural or synthetic. So, uh, so many great comments that I need to catch up on here. People have stopped eating. Okay, Michelle is looking at, yes, why is iodine deficiency a thing in our Western diet? Because restaurants tend to use more fancy salts like sea salt that aren't necessarily fortified with iodine. So Michelle, you're correct. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Rebecca says it's also found in very few foods. That's true. Like, so for someone who's plant-based like myself, I am certainly at risk of iodine deficiency, especially if I'm active, if I have a high metabolism, if I'm sweating a lot, these will all presumably increase our risk of iodine deficiency. doesn't mean we need to supplement with it, but we need to be mindful of our intake in it from our regular foods. Harmony Harding is asking, I have a question. Oh, so anesthesia. All right, we can go to anesthesia, guys. We talked about CMOS. Uh, let me, before we go, jump to anesthesia, uh, <laughs> Harmony Harding, I just want to end by saying that there are many phenols in all plants, including aquatic plants. And phenols are fantastic. There's many different types of phenols. One are flavonoids, like what we see in tea and in turmeric, think curcumin. And then we have lignans, L-I-G-N-A-N-S, not lignins with an I, but with an A. Lignans are often steroid baits like phytoestrogens, are also very powerful. And CMOS definitely has a high phenol concentration. But, 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 and this, this is where the Petri dish comes in. I would never recommend a supplement that's shown Petri dish activity of its phenols to help contribute to antioxidant activity. Even though antioxidants absolutely are involved with all sorts of inflammatory conditions, including cancer, including neurodegenerative disease, Parkinson's, including cardiovascular disease, aging, and so much more, just doing it in a Petri dish doesn't cut it. If I'm making a recommendation, if I'm responsible for a patient's well-being, which includes their financial well-being, I cannot just go off of rats, worms, and Petri dishes. This is why, by the way, you have to remember, why do pharmaceutical companies charge so much for their, their medications, especially in the United States? It's because they start with thousands of possible drugs and narrow them down to one working drug. It's because the thousands of possible drugs worked in the Petri dish, but didn't work out in humans when they tried to do the randomized controlled trial. And this is why just because a supplement, even if it's natural, works in the Petri dish in rats, doesn't mean it's going to work in humans. I don't want my patients to be guinea pigs, especially if there are potential harms. Now, like I said, I support natural supplements all the time. I'm, I studied at the University of Arizona under Andrew Wells Integrated Medicine Fellowship for years, for two years, specifically so I could learn this because I value it very much as part of a holistic healing plan, not as just pushing a natural pill mill. So with that being said, a um, couple of anesthesia questions. I love it. Um, Harmony Harding, why are your hands strapped to the bed when you're in recovery? <laughs> All right, we'll take a right turn from CMOS. So we end with answering your questions. That's why we're here. Um, and like I said, I respect you all coming on here. I want to show up to you and I appreciate when you guys hit that like button and follow to support me doing this more often. Your hands are strapped in recovery because <laughs> after anesthesia, the disinhibiting effects of anesthesia can linger for minutes, sometimes even hours, depending on how long the case was. And when the disinhibition is in place, people can do or say things they ordinarily wouldn't do, like smack themselves in the face or smack their nurse somewhere or smack me as a doctor, wherever, it doesn't matter. But yes, I've been smacked in the rear end multiple times, unintentionally, I'm sure, I hope. But this usually happens in the operating room, usually not in the recovery room. But for those reasons, we don't want a patient to accidentally hit themselves or scratch their eyes if they're open and cause a corneal abrasion or sometimes even hurt themselves um, 
pull out a breathing tube like this one here prematurely, uh, we strap the hands down for that reason, usually in the operating room more than the recovery room, but because anesthesia can linger for some time in the recovery room as well sometimes. Um, Darian, it's so cool to hear that one of your cousins is an anesthesiologist. Uh, Reb Darian is asking if I have on cool socks right now. Not right now, Darian. I wish I did. <laughs> Jay says, empowering myself to conquer anxiety. Thanks. I Thank you for learning to tap into your inner healing potential. I love it, Jay. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Monica Strap, good to see you. I have hypothyroidism. No one can tell me why. So who knows why it's still a problem? Monica, I don't know why either, but I do hope you've seen an endocrinologist to help check your T3, T4, free levels, et cetera. Um, make sure your pituitary is producing enough hormone, et cetera. But gosh, I'm sorry, Monica. I do hope you sought professional help for that. Uh, Hey, Robin, thank you so much for the kind comments, by the way. I appreciate that about sharing my life uh, with someone special. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Jay is asking, how was integrative medicine different than regular medicine? So perhaps we'll end with this. The subject near and dear to my heart, integrative medicine is combining, literally integrating medicine from all over the world. <clears throat> medicine that's been used for sometimes thousands of years across all parts, all cultures, and um, ancestral origins with what we do in the conventional Western medicine. So you can think of Ayurvedic medicine in South India. I have a whole video, by the way, on that. When I went to Nepal, you should check that out where I go through all the Ayurvedic herbs. I think it's really cool. Um, but we also look at traditional Chinese medicine, think acupuncture, different herbs. The way that they view disease is very different than the way that we view disease, the whack-a-mole reductionist approach that we do in the West. Very, very helpful when you're in the operating room or the emergency room. Not necessarily as helpful when we're looking at a holistic patient picture, trying to piece together multiple parts of a patient's life to treat an underlying root cause of disease. Psychedelic medicine is a strong part of integrative medicine. We're integrating all possible treatments that are safe and have evidence instead of just focusing on what I learned in medical school. Yo, I loved Stanford. I loved Harvard. But there is a lot more to medicine than what I learned there. And it's not any fault of theirs. There's just a big world, a lot to be humble for. We all need to be humble that there's so much more medicine that we're going to learn as we practice for years and years and years after finishing school. That's what Andrew Weil helped me appreciate. And yes, Arizona was beautiful. You're absolutely right, sweet and salty. Uh, Heidi, thank you for the kind comments. Um, Jay says, being strapped down is biggest fear. Your TikToks are great exposure. Thank you. Well, Jay, thank you for um, sharing your experience with others here who are going to see this and be inspired by you to take control of their anxiety. So thank you uh, for, for all of that. Um, Robin has an appointment tomorrow with an endocrinologist because their TSH was worse. Well, Robin, I hope everyone here is sending you positive vibes the way that I am, hoping that your visit is productive and fruitful. Miss Eyes 512, hello back to you. Hello, hello. Um, all right. Deidre Baker, I think it's the first time I've seen you on here. Hello. Uh, and Suman, thank you so much for the kind comments. All right. So, hey, thank you everyone who came on. Thank you for your support. Um, good. We touched on, oh, Chris. Sorry, here's the last point. I, I knew there was one comment I didn't address. Chris said, maybe plant-based is good for you. How do people with GI issues find a natural lifestyle? Okay, Chris, thank you so much. We're going to end with your point here because this is very powerful about what natural means. Not everything that's natural is necessarily healthy. Look at the anesthesia drugs that we have. Morphine and codeine both come from opium. Certainly, they're, they can lead to an opioid epidemic like the one that we're in. Atropine can be lethal, can cause you to hallucinate and die at high enough doses, comes from belladonna. Uh, the poison arrow dart drug, I mean, that comes from a frog, I guess, not from a, uh, no, poison arrow dart frog. Oh my gosh, I had a brain fart. Sorry, but the point, <laughs> natural substance we use for a paralyzing agent in the operating room, but can clearly be lethal at the wrong dose. So just because it's natural doesn't mean it's 
safe. Certain mushrooms are, they can have liver toxicities. Certainly, um, not everything that's natural is safe, which is why the dose matters, the type of substance matters, and it depends on what the issue is that we're trying to heal in the patient. Remember we said holistic view. It's not just a pill mill. And I know you're not saying that, Chris, but many of my colleagues or people online treat nutraceuticals as this beautiful thing that's natural with no side effects. Simply not true. If nothing else, the wallet biopsy effect is real like we talked about and the disempowerment that we talked about when we tell patients something is helpful or we tell them they have a gene problem, their bodies begin to enact what we tell them. Our words matter. Every word matters and every action matters. So to your point, finding a natural lifestyle depends on the individual. Certainly patients with celiac have issues that are genetic based, at least in part, lactose intolerance like myself, <laughs> genetically based in part, but there's also epigenetic phenomena and there's microbiome that layer on top of this. And there isn't a one size fits all. It does depend to some extent on trial and error, which is why one of the most powerful tools in medicine that's rarely ever used is the elimination diet because it takes time and effort. It's not a pill but the benefits can be absolutely life-changing when patients discover for themselves what natural diet works and what doesn't work, what hidden food allergies have been underlying so many of their symptoms for years or decades. So Chris, thank you so much for asking that question. I really appreciate that. And uh, we will, uh, unfortunately, no mochi or karma appearance. Oh no, <laughs> mochi is down here. If you want to see Mochi, I'll, yeah, I can grab her. We'll end with Mochi. We'll end with Mochi here. Um, the sea moss is usually taken as a pill. It's dried up and put into a capsule. Uh, is there a medical reason to explain being introverted or extroverted? Ye probably not medical, but likely from our adverse childhood experiences and our conditions growing up. And Alex Cole, good to see you. Thank you for the kind comments. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for your comments. Um, by the way, we put a little, um, see the bow on Mochi? Tell me that's not adorable. Remember, pets have incredible health benefits as well. Dogs are studied more than any other pet, but even crickets, even crickets can help elderly patients have more uh, ownership over their life and increased quality of life. Certainly no medications can do that as safely as even something as trivial as crickets. Uh, Rebecca, <laughs> I'm a dog person too, but we still like Mochi and her little bow. And Kentucky Chick, you're right. Pets are sometimes more healing than anything else. I have a video on what pets can even help with after surgery to reduce opium require, uh, morphine requirements. Uh, especially in pediatric populations, very, very powerful. Puppies over pills, I'll take that any day. <laughs> All right. Uh, I wish everyone a, speed, a good rest of the evening. Oh, there goes Mochi. Remember that you all have more power over your health than you've ever been told. And I'll put a poll up for the next uh, topic you'd like to discuss on our next live stream. Thank you again for all of your support. I wish everyone happy holidays, of course. But remember, there's more that you can control over your body than you've probably ever been told. And my goal here is just to help you learn about that, whether it's with psychedelics, diet, supplements, whenever safely possible, do no harm and tap into your own inner healing potential. Till next time.